You've heard it all a million times by now, the base model M4 Mac Mini is the best value Mac out there. So the day it came out, I picked one up because I wanted to know what all the fuss was about. I did get the absolute base model, I didn't upgrade a single thing, and to my surprise, during my initial review, I was a little bit shocked. It performed way better than I thought it would, it could do things I didn't expect it to, and so overall I was pretty impressed by this little computer. But now that I've been using it for about a month and the honeymoon phase is over, do I have some regrets getting the base model? Let's ramble. Hold up. So guys, let's get this out of the way first. It is the best value computer out there. I think the reason why so many reviewers keep harping on about that is A, because it's true, and B, because it's highly unusual for Apple to produce a best value anything, let alone a best value computer. So they kind of came out of nowhere with this relatively inexpensive, but quite powerful computer. And no, you cannot build an equivalent mini PC. You just can't. I mean, a motherboard offering similar ports, meaning three Thunderbolt 4 ports and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 10 gigabits per second ports on the front, plus an equivalent chip to the M4, those two things alone would probably be enough to send you right over the budget. But hey, if you think you can, prove it. Leave a comment listing the parts you would use. I'd love to be proven wrong. I mean that. Consider it a challenge. Anyway, the amount of computing power and connectivity $599 buys you with this M4 Mac Mini is insane, no matter how you look at it. Plus, you can get it for $499 with the education discount, and from what I've seen and heard, Apple isn't particularly diligent in verifying your education status. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting you should go out and lie about being a student, but, you know, I said what I said. So here's some of the things I was kind of surprised to see. First of all, this base model M4 Mac Mini did a surprisingly good job at editing my videos. I copied a reasonably heavy timeline, lots of 4K clips, including some multicam clips, color grading, even some basic effects, and it can handle that pretty well. Sure, it takes longer to render and a lot longer to export, but if I were to forget my editing workhorse, a spec'd out M3 Max MacBook Pro at home, I could probably get away with editing on this machine for a day or so, as long as I'm not doing anything too crazy. And again, at 600 bucks, that's pretty impressive. What also kind of baffled me was the gaming experience on this thing. But before we get into that, a quick thank you to Bitrix for sponsoring this video. Bitrix 24 is a powerful CRM system to communicate with clients, manage customer databases, and run sales. It can be used by solo entrepreneurs, startups, and companies of all sizes. In Bitrix 24 CRM, you can manage each deal and communicate with customers from a single interface with all the details, including contact information, emails, comments, purchase history, preferences, and the complete record of all interactions automatically stored within the system. Get to know your customers to nurture long-lasting relationships and provide outstanding communication and exceptional sales experiences. Powerful automation options help you automate daily tasks and seamlessly communicate with your clients, turning incoming emails into leads, send emails to your customers at a specific time, send customer notifications via SMS or WhatsApp, track invoice payments automatically, turn phone calls into text, and do much, much more. Automate crucial sales processes to focus on building strong relationships with your customers. Streamline your communications with clients and boost your sales using a single Bitrix24 CRM platform. Bitrix24 is available online and as a free mobile app, which will have you covered every step of your way. To learn more and register a free Bitrix24 account to automate your sales today, check the link in the description below the video. I mean, Apple doesn't have a whole lot of AAA titles available in the App Store yet, but there's a couple of them there, like Lies of P and Resident Evil Village, and those run pretty smoothly. Now, these games are optimized for Apple Silicon, so that probably shouldn't be too much of a surprise. What was more surprising, though, is the fact that I was actually able to install Crossover and run some PC titles for my Steam library, like Cyberpunk 2077. Of course, Settings are all on low and don't expect any crazy frame rates, but it's playable and for a $600 machine that is not at all built for gaming, that's not bad. Now the base model comes with 16 gigabytes of RAM and quite honestly, it was about time Apple ditched that eight gigabyte spec. 16 gigabytes really is the minimum to run smooth operations in my opinion. And smooth operations it is, for the most part. Probably the easiest way to stress test the RAM on this thing is to open a bunch of Chrome tabs. I mean, I could of course run 
some synthetic benchmarks and come to the same conclusions, but I don't really care for those. I'd rather just try and push this thing using real life stuff. And you'd be surprised how many people have a gazillion Chrome tabs open when they're working. Now, to make it a little more interesting, I made sure that all the Chrome tabs had a YouTube video running. I did the same stress test on my M4 Pro Mac Mini, and that one handled 40 Chrome tabs with YouTube videos like an absolute champ. So I decided to run the exact same test here, 40 tabs, 40 videos, and that is where you can see the base model Mac Mini really struggle. Now, to be fair, it did manage to run it, but it ate right through the 16 gigabytes of physical memory, and it was using 10 gigabytes of swap at some point. Now, memory swap isn't necessarily a problem, but the base model only has 256 gigabytes of SSD storage, and it's not the fastest either. Mac OS, a handful of apps, and some games, that's enough to max out the internal storage, which will slow down the machine tremendously. To fix this, you'd either have to upgrade the RAM or the internal SSD storage storage. And this is where things get problematic because as soon as we start upgrading anything on the base model Mac mini, especially RAM or storage, the value proposition goes down the pooper real fast. Doubling the RAM from 16 to 32 gigabytes will cost you an additional 400 bucks. And if you want to upgrade the internal storage to a more reasonable, but still not spectacular, 512 gigabytes, you're looking at a total of $600 on top of the 600 you already spent. That means you can literally buy a whole extra base model Mac mini for the same money this upgrade would cost you. But more importantly, it would get you awfully close to the base model M4 Pro Mac mini, which starts at $1399. But that one comes with 12 core CPU and a 16 core GPU. Not to mention 24 gigabytes of base memory and 512 gigabytes of internal SSD. And that SSD is a lot faster than the one we get on the base model. So at that point, the Pro model would 100% be the better choice. All right, so what does that mean? Does it mean that the base model M4 Mac mini is a bad deal after all? No. Well, not really. The base model M4 Mac mini is still the best value deal out there, but that is only true for the absolute base model. As soon as you start upgrading the base model, it goes from a great deal to a pretty bad deal. Okay, so who is this base model for? Well, there are a few scenarios where I would still recommend the absolute base model M4 Mac mini. The first category of users I think can benefit from getting the base model are office users. If you use your computer mainly for productivity tasks, including some multitasking, maybe some media consumption, and maybe you enjoy doing casual gaming here and there, this computer is a fantastic deal for you. The second category is students. I mean, this is easily the lowest barrier to entry into Apple computers, especially with that education discount. It's an absolute steal. Now, of course, this is a desktop computer, so you won't be taking this into lectures with you, but maybe you already own a tablet or you take your notes on your phone, or maybe you take handwritten notes, imagine that. The base model Mac mini is a great option in those cases. Now, of course, both these user categories will still have to deal with that 256 gigabytes of storage issue, which let's face it, just isn't really that much. Thankfully, there are plenty of options for external storage, including ones that make use of those fast Thunderbolt 4 ports. External SSDs have become a lot more affordable these days, so you could consider getting a one or two terabyte SSD to supplement your storage. I will put a couple of options in the description below the video, some of which will be faster than the internal storage, believe it or not. You won't be running the operating system or your apps from those external SSDs, but you can, of course, keep all your files, including video files, on there. So you can keep your internal storage for essentials, like your apps, preventing the Mac from slowing down too much. But there is another category of users for whom the base model M4 Mac mini is actually a solid buy. Users like myself. Users that already own a fast and or powerful computer, but they need a second one to work from occasionally. Maybe you'd like to work from home from time to time, but you'd like to keep a dedicated machine at your home desk or your office. In that case, this computer is a great and cost-effective addition to your workflow. Personally, I will be keeping my base model Mac mini because I have a very specific use case for it in mind. I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I'm still running my daytime business as well, and it can be a bit inappropriate to get on Zoom calls with clients or colleagues with a bunch of lights and neon signs in the background. So I'm currently working on building a dedicated setup for my video calls and a place where I can do my workshops and my presentations, stuff like that. The M4 Mac mini will be perfectly capable of driving that setup. That way I can keep my machine clean, only install what I absolutely need for the purpose and keep it nice and snappy. 
Having the luxury of just sitting down and do my business calls and presentations whenever I need to without having to adjust my main setup or my surroundings will save me a lot of time and hassle. And that one-off payment of $599 is worth that for me. So guys, to sum up, I still believe the M4 Mac Mini, the absolute base model, is a great deal. But before jumping on the hype wagon, you should really consider what type of user you are and whether the base spec will be enough for you before spending your cash on this machine. 